Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So today, as you can tell from the title, I will be telling you guys all about my labour and delivery. Winnie's down here. I tried to put her up, she was not having it. We've tried filming this video so many times since yesterday and she was just not having it. But she's finally settled and for anyone looking for James, he'll pop in and pop out of the video. I'm on baby watch. <laughs> there he is. If Winnie cries, he's on it. He's behind the camera today, but he's gonna pop in. Ready? Oh. There we go. She's sort of settled now, which She's is great. She's settled. You can see her little legs here. So my labour started on the 31st on Friday at 3am. December. December, yes. Of course. It's not going to be January. 31st of February. <laughs> A day that doesn't even exist. So, um, I didn't wake James up when they started because I just wanted to make sure these are contractions, it's not Braxton Hicks. But from the way they felt, I was pretty sure from what my... Ooh. Oh, bless you, baby. I was pretty sure from what my midwife described, there were definitely contractions. But I kind of went through them until morning by myself. And then I told you in the morning, Yeah. I think I've started my contractions. And at that point, they were 30 minutes apart. But yeah. during the day, it was still pretty chilled because they all... Yeah! Oh, okay. Baby duty. Baby duty. We're off. <laughs> but during the day, they were still pretty chilled because they only went down to every 15 minutes, would you say? The Friday, you seemed okay. Because I, I, I was sort of chilling on the Friday because yeah. Coco was here. So I'm not sure what the times were during the day. I know at night is when it dropped down to five minutes. Yeah. So Friday was an okay day for me. I could kind of deal with the contractions by myself. Soldiered on. We're going to hand her over to my sister. Yeah. Hold on. This is what happens when you're filming with a little one. You can't help it. So when he's now gone to Jules. Yeah. Quick little recap because even I've forgotten where we were. Friday during the day all is okay. I can handle you it. You can handle it. Yeah and at this point we're just excited. We're thinking oh my gosh she might be here today, she might be here tomorrow. You so were thinking that. I <laughs> knew she was coming in January. I was saying from the minute we found out you were pregnant January. This baby is going to be a January baby like me. I did want a January baby. You but did? you get to a point during pregnancy where you're just like, just get out now. As soon as you hit December, you were like, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. done. I'm done. I'm <laughs> <laughs> but got through the whole day on contractions. Nothing happened. And they weren't too painful. Like, I could still do stuff through them. So I was trying everything. You were That's hoovering. <laughs> I was doing everything. You were doing all sorts. Praise and worship, walking around, singing. Everything. That's why I thought you were fine on the Friday. Yeah. Because people were saying to us, oh, you need to go, you need to go. But I was like, she's no, fine. she's fine. She's like hoovering, steaming the floors, walking around, singing and yeah. dancing. And I think at that point, you were okay. bossing it. Okay. You were bossing it. What do you mean at that point? I bossed it throughout the whole thing. <laughs> we'll see. We'll hear the rest of the well, story. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're, even you're starting to forget what happened literally Friday night. That was a Friday during the day. It's at night. Like coming to the evening when they started getting intense. They started getting worse, more painful, and they were down to like every six, seven minutes now. And the first thing we did was try to call our midwife just to get some advice. Our midwife was on holiday and didn't tell us. So we didn't know what to do. The only thing we could do was call the labor ward and just let them know. But they just said, stay at home until they're two minutes apart. Until you're having yeah. contracting three minutes. No, three two, times every 10 minutes yeah. for a minute and a half yeah. but we weren't there so we just stayed at home yeah. but we were calling our mums the whole time asking what do we do what do we do it got really bad that evening didn't it yes so that's why we went to the hospital in the first place and i'm thinking i've been contracted from 3 a.m and it's now 11 p.m and it's be, dropped down i must always be there yeah and that's when they checked me and they said oh you're only one centimeter dilated you can go home wait at the rest of the labour. I was so disappointed, guys. I almost cried. Yeah, yeah. Because I had been going through it and they were getting so, so painful and I felt like I've done so many hours of this already. Well, literally, like, that was... probably sent you home about one o'clock. Yeah. So you're coming up to 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. So we came home and then you were helping me through it. So we stayed downstairs, turned off the lights. Yes. And we were just going through breathing exercises, doing everything we can. He was Googling how to make this labour go a little bit faster yeah. because I was in a lot of pain at that point and we're trying And you everything. haven't slept for 24 hours yeah. at this point and now you're going into day two. Sa yeah, going Saturday. With every five minutes. Contracting. Non-stop. Yeah, and like they weren't it wasn't moving. Even, yeah, they weren't getting... Uh, they weren't shorter. Shorter or longer. It was five minutes 
from midnight, yeah, the night before, all, the way all day Saturday, until yeah. we went to the hospital again for a second time. Yes, yeah, so we tried to go as much as we can on Saturday without going to the hospital, just doing what we can, stay yeah. at home, yeah. to, to try and get to the time that they asked us to get to. But time was literally moving from five minutes to six minutes, seven minutes, so it wasn't even going down. I was, mm. I was having more time between the contractions, and they were getting more painful. So we ended up going to hospital on Saturday again, Saturday evening, but you were going down because you were getting exhausted. Yeah, I was tired. I was Because it's now 30 odd hours coming up to 48 hours. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and still no sleep, can't sleep through them, they were too painful. So we went in on Saturday evening. We had this amazing midwife who checked, who checked me over, and we were expecting for her to say, Oh, you're four or five centimeters dilated now because. It's been 24 hours since you told me I was one centimetre dilated. So surely I've dilated some more in 24 yeah, hours. Yeah. And she checked me over. She's like, you're one centimetre dilated. I said I was one centimetre dilated 24 Yesterday, hours ago. Yeah. So how am I still one centimetre dilated? And that's when she explained to me, like, a lot of times with, especially black women, when you have that hourglass shape, your hips tend to be quite narrow. So mm. when the baby's head is engaged, it's wide find, at the top, narrow at the bottom. Yeah, they find yeah. it hard to kind to of lock in. twist yeah. in position properly. And her head was facing up a little bit yeah. and she needed to just lock down. So what my body kept doing is rotating her, rotating yeah. her, rotating yeah. her, trying to get her into the perfect position. Because once you, the head goes down, uh, down, I would have dilated. You'd have dilated properly. Yeah. naturally and it'd have gone, you'd have been in a better spot, but because it was every five minutes, it was just trying the same to, thing, same thing, the same thing, trying thing, to get, get her head to go Down. to where it's supposed to be. Yeah, things were just not moving at this point, but everything was ready. When she checked me over, she said, everything is ready. It's just we need baby's head to fully face yeah. down and your body will continue doing its thing. It's yeah. Right now it's stuck. So she gave us like a bunch of things we can do to just allow my hips to open up a little bit. So we got home. This was about midnight on Saturday. that we came home Yeah. on the Saturday. So you're coming up to 48 hours now yeah. with so... new exercises to do <laughs> after 48 <laughs> hours of no today. sleep. Yeah. So they said, try taking a bath to relax you. Listen, James ran the bath. Firstly, I crawled up the stairs because I couldn't even walk. And lifting my leg into the bath, impossible, couldn't do it. I said, no, I'm going back downstairs. And I crawled down the stairs. You weren't just saying it, you were crying, <laughs> no, 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 screaming, no, 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 no. passing I shouted, out. No, 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 I shouted it. I didn't cry this time. That's not the point I cried. You were, you were crying this point. No, I was bossing it. <laughs> no, you're forgetting this. See, I don't want you to forget these moments because then you might say, oh, let's have another one. You were feeling it. You were thinking about I think it. I was I, tired. I too have now also been awake for 48 <laughs> hours. So I'm tired and you were really feeling it. Getting I, up the stairs wasn't like, oh, I just crawled up the stairs. It was one step, <laughs> two step, <laughs> three step. <laughs> so, so, so in yeah. my words... I was bossing it. I was bossing. Oh, you were, boss you were still you were bossing it because they were still every five minutes, yeah. and you were still contracting for like a minute. Yeah. There's no way you could get in the bath. I, I ran the, the bath. bath. Yeah. Done the stuff. There's, you couldn't even lift your leg to get in there. You yeah. couldn't do any of the exercises. No. Anything like no. that. No. And we tried. We did try some of the exercises. They just didn't work. I was just in more pain trying the exercises yeah. than not trying them at all. So at this point, I'm just like, I'm just gonna do it. So he turned down the lights again, yeah. and he just held my hand and tried to help me breathe through the whole experience. But they got so painful that I couldn't breathe through them. And that night I said, no, we're going back to the hospital because- Well, this I is the morning, because we yeah, come home about 12 o'clock, 12, yeah. 1 o'clock, by 6 o'clock, yeah, boom, I couldn't, it. It. I couldn't said, do it. I said, I said, I can't do it anymore. No. It's been you were over. Two, up. It's been over two days. They gave me codeine to try and help with the pain while I'm at home because I wasn't dilated enough. Yeah. I threw yeah. up. They just made me feel so. And much the other worse. thing is, you couldn't eat as well. You couldn't eat or drink in that. In from all of Saturday, I think you barely ate or drank. So you've done 72 hours awake, mm -hmm. minimal food and water. Because I remember you were saying, "Oh, just take sips." Yeah. You take sips. You were throwing, throwing it up. up. So we ended up going back on Sunday morning again. So they've seen us for the second time. So they've seen now. us a couple of hours before, and yeah. they've seen us again because we called our mums, and our mums were like, "Go in," and this time when you go in, don't let them send you home because you're in a lot of pain and things aren't moving, and it's been three days now. Yeah. So they yeah. have to keep you in just to double check everything and help you as much as they can. So we went knowing that I'm not coming home. If I go, I have to give birth when I go because this is too long. When we actually went in, they were so nice and someone... Same staff because it was the, the same people... 
um, from... when we saw him a few hours before. Yeah. So then you, oh, you must be in a lot of pain to come in again. So they found me a bed, but there wasn't any in there in the prenatal ward with all the women ready to give birth. Yeah. So I had to stay in the postnatal ward with everyone who's just given birth. So I was just yeah. hearing all the babies crying. And while I was there, I was like, oh, what can I take for the pain? They said, Cody. And I said, no, that's making me throw up. That's not helping at all. By the way, paracetamol, codeine, ah, oh, versus no, contraction, working, yeah, it don't yeah, work yeah. at all. So instead, they offered me a pethidine, which is one below an epidural. And I didn't care whether they were injecting it at this point. Normally, I'm like, oh, where are you injecting that way? I was like, no, yeah, wherever yeah. you want to inject it, go ahead. And that knocked me out because it makes you focus more on how tired you were than the contraction. Yeah, and yeah. that's the first time I had slept in like three days. Three days, yeah. And I weren't allowed to, because it was outside visiting hours. Yeah, yeah. So when go. you went in, I came back and managed to get, I think, two, three hours sleep. So even I managed to get a little bit of sleep. And yeah. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> and then he came back the next morning and they were going to move me to the prenatal ward and when they moved me there oh I was so excited because yeah. I could get another pethidine while I was there and they injected that yeah, and as soon as yeah. they injected me with that one I knocked out you flat. looked you looked better as well when, when the visiting hours yeah. were back open and I saw you you looked better because you had some sleep yeah but you'd done three days of no sleep just having that like an hour two three hours whatever it was yeah come back and you were like Refreshed. A lot better. Yeah. yeah. Even though I have to say, when the pethidine wore off every time, yeah. the contractions were more painful yeah, than yeah. ever before. That's why I was so eager to like get another pethidine yeah, because yeah, yeah. oh, the pain was just becoming unbearable. But now, as in the prenatal ward, I think they were, they're able to look after you a bit more. Oh, 100 And they're yeah. able to tend to you, yeah. and they have someone monitoring you every couple of hours. Yeah. So that yeah, was a lot yeah. better. So Sunday. So you Sun were fine Sunday. Sun I wasn't fine. I wasn't fine. <laughs> I, I mean, you had two pethidines pef 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 on Sunday, yeah, and you were f you were okay. a lot better. Yeah. I think your contractions even actually spaced out to normal because you actually yeah. relaxed. I relaxed so much. Instead yeah. of my contractions getting closer, they got wider apart. Yeah. But this time, when the midwife checked me, I was dilating a little bit yeah. more. You're about three centimeters dilated yeah. now. So three days, three centimeters. Yeah. But Sunday, I pretty much got through it just from a lot of breathing exercises. And in between yeah. the contractions, you kept me distracted. Yeah. We were watching little things on the phone. I was calling people. I was yeah, texting yeah, in between. Yeah. And I was trying to eat as much as I can because yeah. a lot of people kept telling me, yeah. you need your energy. And they were giving you fluids as well, yeah. which helped. You were oh, on the fluids yeah. as well. And I think your contractions went up to every 20 odd minutes to part no, no, on no, the no. Sunday. No, 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 15? they never got to there. No, eight. Eight, they never okay. got they never okay. got further than eight minutes they only right. went up to eight minutes apart so they said right, they're just going right. to monitor me because my contractions were getting wider apart yeah but every few hours they kept coming to just check the baby's all right because the baby should be kicking as normal and then we got through sunday and then monday oh the pain just yeah shut up again now the good thing for me on monday was visiting times was eight till eight yeah so i had to leave at eight o'clock yeah so I went home and I slept from 8 o'clock till 8 o'clock the next day. I caught up on all of my sleep. Whereas me, I was wide awake most of that night because contractions were just going like this. They were just getting worse and worse and they started closing down again. But even when the midwife yeah. checked me on Monday, still three centimetres, we're not moving. So they kept saying, like, obviously, if you get to, like, Tuesday, Wednesday... Well, this is when... Monday's when they started talking about inducing, inducing you. Me. That's when they started saying, OK, yeah. Wednesday will we'll induce you if nothing has changed. Yeah. Yeah. They gave me a stretch and sweep on Sunday. Yeah. And they gave me another one on Monday just to try and get things moving. But they weren't helping. They didn't move things along at all. Because they, they even I... said they work for some people, they don't work for everyone. Yeah. And then... The pain got a bit much in the morning, so they mm -hmm. gave me a pethidine yeah. around 10, yeah. and that's when I fully fell asleep yes. for a couple of hours. And when I woke up, that's when I saw like a little patch of water yeah. on the bed, and I thought, oh, I think my waters are broken. But I have been wrong before and thought, my waters are broken, and they weren't. So I was a bit careful, so I just kind of mentioned it to the midwife, oh, I think my waters are broken, I'm not too sure. And that's when she said, oh, we can, we can bring someone do a, in do a check, to just yeah, check yeah, and yeah. test them. And then they did the check. And lo and behold, yes, my water broke themselves. Because I've had stories about how they break the waters for you. <laughs> and I was not going to go through that. Which meant, also, I don't have to be induced on yes. Wednesday if yeah. things keep moving. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been 87 hours. How are you feeling? 87 long. <laughs> but I think we're over the worst of it, I'd say. 
because we're on the home stretch now and we know it's gonna happen soon. My water's broken, so yeah. Yeah. it's all good. It's all good, sweetie. Really. Baby, baby. baby. It's, it, it is the home stretch now. It's like you yeah. said, water's broken. It's just a matter of time now, isn't it? Yeah. Before little one slides down the pipes. So waters are broken and now it's just a matter of monitoring the baby, making sure yeah, all is okay. Yeah. And the contractions were getting wider apart, but they were lasting longer and they were a lot more painful because yeah. I remember I couldn't breathe through them anymore. And that's when I kept telling you, can you walk around with me yeah, so I can yeah, try yeah, and yeah. get this labor moving? Because at this point, my contractions is painful. <laughs> and oh it's been a long day. time. It's been a long time. So we fast forward Tuesday, still the same story. Yeah. We're on day five of labor. Things aren't moving. We're still three centimeters in five days. Oh my days. At this point, I'm calling my mum, you're calling your mum, they're wondering how come it's been so long, can't they help you get things moving along but they were doing everything they can. This is where I, I know the water times is because I wasn't actually that worried. Yeah. Because I thought your waters broke 5pm 5. 5 Monday evening. Yeah. So when the new team come in said oh um as long as, it, as long as it's not been over uh, 24 hours with the water broke and yeah. everything fine I said oh yeah that's fine because that's fine, our waters broke at 5. She went oh. No, the notes I've got here say 10 a.m. yesterday. Yeah. And then that's when I was like, oh. Because in our heads, we were told 24 hours yeah. she's going to be here. So we're like, she's coming. She's going to be coming soon. We're, at this point, we're just excited. Yeah. And I'm just excited to like, finish anyway. So on Tuesday, they're heavily monitoring the baby because my water's broken. And yeah. one thing they kept saying to me is, because I had to put a pad on, they kept telling me, check the colour of your waters yeah. because they have to remain straw coloured. If they're a different colour, please alert the team. Babe, I don't know what straw colour means. <laughs> so, every time I checked, I'd just see whatever colour I saw. When they come back to the room and they say, what colour are your waters? When they say, are they straw colour? You know what I'm straw like, yeah. is though, don't you? No, I don't. What's you straw colour? Like in, in films, like cowboy films, you see the cowboys chewing like the straw. Yellow. It's like yellow, yeah. It's, like, it's, it's straw, it's like a wheat. Yeah, it's but like... then when I said, I think they're yellowish, they said straw, and I said, yeah. So I wasn't quite sure specifically. Mm. I think they should just give us a chart to just show us this is the colour we're looking pick the, for. Pick the colour it yeah, is. Yeah, pick the yeah. colour, point out the colour without influencing me. Because I kept saying, yeah, it is, yeah, it is, until I thought about it. And I said to one of the midwives, actually, can I just show you? Yeah. So you can yeah. see whether it's actually straw coloured, because I'm not sure. And that's when she checked, and then she went to double check with someone else, and then they came back and said, oh, the baby's pooped, so we're going to have to start moving things along and monitor you a little yeah. bit more. And that's when they strapped up the monitors. Ideally, that's not safe for both you and yeah, baby for yeah, them yeah. to have poop. So they just need to monitor the baby closely and monitor me as well. And this so, is about five o'clock in the evening on the Tuesday. Yeah. One of the junior midwives is looking and then she noticed, oh, the baby's heart rate keeps changing a lot. Yeah. And it's in relation to your... Contractions. Uh, to my yeah. contractions. Mm. And then she said, let me just get another midwife to check. So they went and got another midwife. And what they realised is there was a pattern. Every time I contracted, it was stressing the baby out. Yeah. So every time I contracted, her heart rate would go down. And it's every single time. It wasn't yeah. just a one-off. Yeah. So they said, we're going to keep an eye on this for a couple more minutes. And Especially as baby had pooed and Waters now she's broken. getting it's stressed. been over five days it's a lot going on so they had to just call it and they went and spoke with the person who was head of the team and they called it they said we can't wait any longer yeah. because letting you keep going and you've already done five days baby's pooped waters are broken it's going to be too stressful for the baby so to avoid further stress it's safer to just get her out now yeah and that's when i thought oh wow like, so we're headed for a C-section. Yeah, they were like, said, yeah, yeah, emergency, emergency C-section. Yeah. As soon as they said that, I'm telling you, everything happened so, so quick. quick. Because so, so next quick. thing I know, there was someone putting in a little thing cannula, in my arm, a little yeah, cannula yeah. in my arm, just to monitor everything. They were already rolling me onto a new bed, yeah, yeah. rolling me down the corridor. They were, into like, to the me, they were like to me, grab all your stuff because you're going over to, to the yeah. labour ward now. So I had all the stuff, I'm like, can all the stuff? <laughs> you're on the table, like strapped up with all these people. All yeah, the I'm just there rolling through it. So we go into this little private room and yeah. then... They, I had this, to get changed, didn't yeah. I? They gave me like a uh, scrubs to put on. Yeah, oh, you were having a great time. Yeah. <laughs> and then for me at this point, I'm just, because I don't even know what's going on because everything's happening so yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah. There's so many doctors speaking over each other saying, oh, we're going to do this, do that, do that. And they said, okay, we need to just monitor the baby a bit closer so the straps won't work. So we've got to put this hair clip on their hair. I said, 
Yeah. What? You're gonna do what? They had to put a little clip on the baby's hair and that completely broke my waters. Yeah. Remember before it was like yeah, little yeah, water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That completely yeah. broke the whole waters. And it was just surreal how quickly they got yeah. me in. They were just waiting for the theatre to be prepared. And it was literally within 15 minutes, theatre was ready. Yeah, all that happened at like five o'clock. And by six, by six o'clock, in you're there. in on the table. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then I was in there with you. It was like, mm. it was, and it all felt. Do you know what the thing is? Time felt slow but quick. Quick at the same time, yeah. It was it, it was a weird feeling. It was like slow but fast. We're here, we're there. But incredible team. Like yeah, you had all the right people at the right time. At the right time it's in true. the room. Do you know what I mean? Like, all the staff that come in said, right, this is what's going to happen. We're going to make an incision here. Yeah. They were lovely, really professional. Yeah. And explained everything to you. Passing the notes over to the other people, like the, the junior staff that was giving them all the notes. And yeah. oh, I decided everyone took the right steps yeah and everyone was really friendly explained everything to me there wasn't a point where i, f I was confused about what's happening no. to my body no. and why this is happening there was always someone on hand to kind of explain so we're going to do this and this is what's happening and we're waiting for this and that and the other so you I never had, felt I alone i had to sign a form as well if anything happened to you <laughs> <laughs> that was weird <laughs> like oh okay yeah no that's scary yeah. well, I, i'm laughing now but in that moment that's scary because you're kind of like you don't know what to expect and the only oh, thing we weren't worried though because we knew the right people in the room yeah the only thing i remember mainly before you came in the room when they took me in there was just them making me bend as far as possible to like freeze my back and then numb my back and then as soon as i was numbed and on the table that's when you came in yeah and then they asked I had to wait, <laughs> I? I had to wait till they put like the screens up and yeah. stuff like that yeah and then when he came in they kept checking to make sure obviously you're numb yeah before they yeah, start yeah, yeah. and as soon as he came in they asked him do you want to cut the umbilical cord and what did he say i was like uh <laughs> I was in, in my mind, I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. And then I said, oh, if I cut it, is like blood going to squirt? And so they said, oh, it may be. And I was like, oh, no, no, I'm okay. I don't want to see no blood squirting around. Oh, I keep saying, if it was me, if I could move my arms, because you can't, on the table, your arms are literally by your yeah. side, and they have to stay by your side in case you jerk. Yeah, yeah. But if I had an opportunity to cut the umbilical cord, go. But you know me in blood, that's the thing. Like, do you know what I mean? If, if, I'd, if I'd have seen all the blood and stuff, I'd have been like, oh, yeah, do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, I'm glad I didn't because yeah. that seeing that would have just freaked me out. And actually seeing the umbilical cord, I think that would have freaked me out. No, but That's you right. know, but before they started, they said it literally takes five minutes to take her out. It takes twenty no, minutes so to wrap quick. you up because so they just quick. have to stitch and it yeah. has to be very, done very carefully. But literally, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. At this point, I'm still a bit out of it. But I was so numb, I couldn't feel the contractions anymore. So this is the first time in five days where I felt like myself. Even though I can only feel myself from here to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're, I'm, I was not in pain. Yeah. For the first yeah, time yeah, in five yeah. days, yeah. I was not in pain. Yeah. So I was a bit more relaxed. And then I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to be okay. I'm okay with blood. And then I looked at the screen and I saw splash. Like, and that's when I said, now, yeah. I remember telling him, have you got earphones so I can distract myself? And he just, and he just kind of held my hand. We just looked at each other the whole time. Yeah. And it happened so quick. I, I did put earphones in. Yeah, you did. But by the time I played the song. We didn't even get two minutes into the song. She was, they, they were like, oh, do you want to see her coming out? And yeah. we were like, I, I've just put the music on and gave yeah. you the, And so we were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. And then they put the screen down, didn't they? Yeah. But not so we could see you. Yeah, yeah. They put the screen down, and then they then we saw she Winnie coming out, out, and she comes out. She's like, she's <laughs> walking. Yeah. So yeah, she come out oh. and like hearing her little squawk yeah. and stuff. The first thing you said because you couldn't, I don't think you could actually see over the screen. I think I actually saw her. Uh, no, I know. Uh, yeah, I saw her too. Yeah. You were like, is she okay? That's the first thing you said. Is she okay? Is she okay? okay? She she's comes okay? like, yeah, yeah, she's fine. And then I cried and. He cried. I did. Yeah, yeah, we both got really emotional because it just, it was such a surreal moment, like from just going through it all those days yeah. to this moment. It's like a relief. Been, you've it? been like, waiting oh, for this moment yeah. for so many months and like yeah. so long and wondering when is this moment going to happen? Yeah. And it's finally happening. For me, seeing her face, it, it was just surreal. It yeah. felt like, I don't know, I felt like I was dreaming that I know, experience. yeah, it, it's an incredible thing. Yeah, and then you're there at the table, they're stitching her for such a long time, and I'm just there trying to see her, what are they doing? Yeah. I kept asking, what are they doing to yeah, her? Yeah, because they okay? called me over, didn't they? So while yeah. they did the, the vitamin K, 
yeah. injection for her. And then I saw her on the bed while they cleaned her up and yeah. stuff. But you were laying sort yeah. of over the room, just like, is she okay? Is she okay? Is she okay? And oh. she's like, she's like, wah, wah. <laughs> she's going for it. I'm like, yeah, she's fine. Oh. I think they let me hold her. Yeah, I think they did. You, they asked oh, no, you want they, to hold her. No, they weighed her. Then I held her. Yeah. And then... I um, got to hold her. And then you got, and as soon as she got to you, she sort of stopped crying, didn't yeah, she? She was we like, got, we did a little skin to skin. Yeah, yeah. And then that's when, after they finished wrapping me up, they asked you to wait in the labour ward again while yeah. they take me through a few checks. And then she was just in my arms, and I promise you, the whole time, <laughs> fair, fair enough, I'm numb, I'm still numb from here to here. Yeah, yeah. But the whole time, I'm looking at her, and it's just like, oh my gosh, it's, like, it's surreal, it's, isn't it? It's surreal. surreal. Like, honestly, the most surreal experiences. And you literally do forget about the five days of oh, no yeah. sleep. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The contraction. Yeah. All of that was... I couldn't even think about any of that. I was just thinking, oh, my day, she's here. Yeah. This is real. This is happening. And I just couldn't stop staring at her. And then we got back into the room with you. No, I, okay. um, they How were taking you, you straight down. They told me to meet you walking up to oh, where you originally came from. Yeah. No, we went to postnatal. Post yeah. Yeah. yeah so, and I met you as you come out of the theatre, and then we went yeah. up together. Yeah. And um, and then so that was half, half of the things I can't remember. I was I was in a daze. Yeah. And then that was kind of it, really, because like yeah. you were with her, and then we got all the way. To, we were together. They set up the room and stuff, but you still couldn't. I don't think you could move your legs. And no, stuff. I you were still. It takes so, a couple of hours to. So they fill me, my legs and by the time we got back to the ward it, it was, was like 7 30 and, yeah. and visiting time closed at 8 yeah but they let me stay for a couple of hours because you couldn't move yeah so i stayed with her and she was just like i was just holding her for yeah. for, for ages and stuff and then and then yeah and yeah. then she like latched on and fed yeah. and stuff uh, but what i kept saying throughout like this is the reason winnie we believe is destined for great things is because she came at the right time. So when we, on the 31st when we went in, mm. all the way until the 4th, which was a Tuesday, yeah. there was New Year's Eve that happened on the weekend, so therefore the bank holiday was Monday. So from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Monday. they had skeleton staff. Yeah. They had reduced numbers of staff. For us, we just thought that was the normal number of staff. Mm. But they'd done an incredible job. Yeah. They were fantastic. Like They didn't make it seem like there, there, was, there short was short staff. staff. That's all, yeah. So even on the Monday, after the New Year's Eve celebrations and so stuff. A lot of people are still away. A lot of people are still away. So on the Tuesday when she came, when when I turned up that morning, there was like Loads hundreds of staff. Of and it was like, wow, Winnie waited for like all the Bad right people day. to be in the right room. Because that was one of the things that we were like praying about every night was like that the right people we'll are in the, in the right, right room, room yeah. at the right time. And it was like on the Tuesday, Everyone everybody was, was there. And they're all bright eyed, bushy tailed because they've had their New Year's <laughs> Eve parties over the weekend. Monday they got to rest. And then Tuesday it was like, Everyone business. back to work. Everyone back to business. And, yeah. you know, it was incredible. Like, yeah. she knew, you she knew, the we assignment. knew. And it was, like, oh. it was amazing. And after that, it was literally just being checked over to make sure I'm okay. Yeah. And obviously because the pandemic is still on. And there was a lot there was a lot of people giving yeah, birth at yeah, this yeah, time. Yeah. So they need the beds. So they are they were moving people a lot quicker. So yeah. normally with a C-section, I heard that you stay in hospital a lot longer. But I came home the next day. Two, three o'clock? Yeah, during the day. Yeah. And, but that's obviously after yeah. they've done a lot of checks to make sure you're all good. You're oh, yeah, you had, to, you had to meet all the... If you didn't meet all the checks, you would have stayed. You stayed. But, but you I met were, all the checks. You and absolutely bossed it. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I think when, even when you come home, I don't think you could properly... No, I couldn't move a lot, Mum. Yeah. I couldn't move yeah. much. I yeah. couldn't wake myself up from bed and I couldn't sit up properly yeah, by myself. Yeah, I remember that. I, I was... just needed a bit more help. Yeah. But if I lay down, it's game over. I can't get up. Yeah. For a week, like, once I lay down, game that over. That was it, yeah, yeah. Someone I, has to help me For the out. first week or week and two weeks, it was kind of like me and everyone else sort of doing the lifting yeah. of Winnie, moving her yeah. position because you couldn't move. Yeah. When we came home, your sister and your mum were here. Yeah. So they were happy and on hand to help because we didn't know a lot. So they were kind of guiding us We didn't know anything. And because I can't get myself up, so you even had to bring her to me. Yeah. I can't do much. I can't lift her up or anything like that. So the first two weeks, he was on diaper changes all by himself. <laughs> and I think I'm making up for it now. I went, <laughs> I went a lot of the diaper changes. But you did most of the diaper changes by yourself. Yeah, that first two yeah, weeks. yeah. Obviously with help from Chloe and your mum. Yeah. And it was just great to have them there because they were able to help oh, us. Oh, 100%. Because like, like we said in the, in the last video, we had no idea. And like... You know, you're just running off like love and adrenaline for the first few days, yeah. but then you then you crash because you're so tired. Yeah. And having other someone else there to help you just yeah. makes a massive difference. Yeah. But that's you know, like we said in the last video, without everybody here. 
helping. Oh, oh god, that should have been so Because we both went practically five days without sleep and stuff like that, yeah. and going through an emergency C-section. My body was done. Yeah. As soon as the medication that they gave me started to wear off. Yeah. Like that's when I felt that five days of no sleep, <laughs> and I started feeling the C-section pain. But, but yeah, because but before that I was floating. I was yeah. like, oh, I love because this. for you it's been five days plus like the three days at home yeah. where you're sort of coming off of the meds and stuff. Yeah. So you're 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 done like a week a week or so. Whereas me visiting time, I was going home and getting a rest, coming it's back. Because <laughs> the only time I slept was when they gave me pethidine those two times. Yeah. So yeah, I've basically yeah, yeah. five days in total I've had about six hours of sleep. Yeah, you got to on your records it's uh, it's a hundred and eight hour labour. Yeah. Hundred and eight hours. <laughs> oh my days. Hundred and eight hours. But we did it. We did it. You, uh, you like, bossed honestly, it. Honestly, we did it. Absolutely oh, it. by God's grace. Yeah. Honestly, by God's grace, prayer. Yeah, yeah. We prayed a lot yeah. throughout that whole yeah, labour, yeah. that's for sure. Oh, 100%. And, oh, we're just so thankful that she's here now. She, that, now it's easy. Yeah. Now we know what we're doing. We, we're just like breezing through it's it. It's easy. <laughs> Hey, excuse me, I didn't know it was easy. <laughs> it's easier. We it's know easier. what we're doing. Like yeah. we're, we're comfortable we're and confident. Yeah. And we've got our routines of like bedtime and this. That. Yeah. Like you can say, I know. you go, oh, she's going to go to the toilet in the, next tw in the next 20 minutes. Boom, she does it. She, oh, she's going to fall asleep around this time. Bang, she falls asleep around this time. You've, you've Getting there. got it down to a yeah. T. But honestly, I do feel like we are so blessed to have her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the whole, everything was just worth it. Like, and I would do came, it again for her. When she came out, she was super alert. Even when she was first born, yeah. they were like, wow, this is a really healthy, alert happy, baby. alert baby. And we were like, yeah. And, you know, just think, like, the day before, they were like, oh, heart rate's dropping with a contraction. Then yeah. she come out and she's like, yeah, I'm here, to good go. to go. Honestly, so, so blessed. And I would do it again for her. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Did you think I was going to say, do it again? I thought you were going to say, do it again, have another <laughs> chance. Like, oh, hold on a minute. Just wait there, let's... I said, I'm yeah, doing it yeah. for her. Let, I said, let the mental shock die down. Yeah. It's, it's been no, two months need, after. We, we need a still, breather. We need, we a, need breather. a breather, yeah, yeah. We need yeah. to breathe. Yeah, she could be the only child for a good few years. For a while, yeah. yeah we need yeah, to breathe. Yeah. But we'll see, God willing, we'll see how it goes. Exactly. But... That that's it basically. That's, that's it. That's the yeah. Yeah. delivery story. A hundred hours later, we did it. Exactly. <laughs> and this is like the tenth time filming it, and us, and Winnie is still downstairs with Jules, so we know all is good. All is well. She's doing really well. She's yeah. downstairs sleeping at the moment. Brilliant. So there. that's the that's the labour story. No stone unturned. You <laughs> you've got every juicy little bit of detail yeah. from it. I didn't want to scare you guys and go into detail about the pain. But <laughs> it's intense. It's intense. It, like even me being there, going through it with you. Yeah. Like even I was like, oh, this is intense. I yeah. was worried at points. Like, how do you do this? There's no way. There's yeah. no way that any guy on this planet could go through that. I'm telling you now. Mm. We're we're built different. Mm. Yeah. We're good at certain things and can do certain things. Our bodies just can't do that. Mm. It's just not. It's mm. just not possible. Because even on. Sunday, it got so, Saturday it got so bad, we called my mum to come in and just kind of help yeah. me brief through yeah. it. You just absolutely took it on the chin, it was intense. Well, we don't, we don't have any options. <laughs> you did it, you did it. Yeah. No, exactly, that's the thing, women don't have any options. So to show that is just like the Amazing. levels of strength that women have. Yeah, the female body is incredible. <laughs> Trust me, there's honestly a whole new appreciation. Well done. Well done, sweetie. Yeah. You brought our little girl into this world. I did. And you supported me bring her into oh, it. Of course I did. Of course I did. Yeah, but yeah, we're very blessed and we're really, really happy. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. If you have any questions, pop them below. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it from us, guys. We hope you enjoyed this story time. And if you do have any questions, just pop them below. We're always happy to answer them. Or you can just DM us on socials. But that's it from that's us. That's it. Until we'll next time. We'll see you guys in the next video.